Hey everybody, I'm Juan Sestogi with EXP Real Estate. And I'm Chris with the Rockstar team with Citibank Mortgage. I'm a real estate agent. I help people buy and sell homes. Lewis is the loan officer, and we're here to talk about what that partnership looks like, right, Lewis? Yeah, we're, we're, I think I'm a loan officer. No, actually, I'm, <laughs> I'm more than a loan officer. <laughs> but me and Juan have been working together since 2007, and the unique proposition between us two is we've always learned how to leverage each other. So today we're gonna to talk about how to work with a with your lender to get the maximum output on your real estate. Because a lot of times you don't leverage your lender the right way. So just to touch on that, thank you for bringing that up. If you, this is what I say, I wanna ask anybody out there, this, this is gonna be a great educational video for any loan officer out there, a realtor and loan officer, but more realtor. If you could wave a magic wand and build out your perfect loan officer, what qualities would you want, right? What qualities would you want? And let me share with you what I would want. I would, number one, I would want a loan officer that helps me convert leads into actual closing. We've, we've made money, they bought a beautiful home, everybody's happy, right? I want a loan officer that can help me convert. I want a loan officer that can do their work, do quality work with the loan. I want one that's gonna help me build trust and build relationships with the buyers and right. ultimately, ultimately help me get more referrals. That's what we've been able to establish. This is pretty much what I've been able to do. What I described to you, what, what I asked you to think about as a perfect loan officer, that's what Lewis is for me and our real estate business. At the same time, Juan has become the perfect agent because he has learned to edify me so when I am working with your client, I'm not having to create trust. I'm spending time more on getting the client what their needs and wants are, but at the same time, edifying Juan. So together, it becomes a synergy. We become like one team helping that client. And at the end, it makes a huge difference. I love it. You know how normally realtors are supposed to give out three lenders? This isn't the case. I actually do do that. I will give three lenders out, right? And then I'll ask them. In the meantime, I'll say, hey, listen, do you have a lender that you trust? Listen to see where they go. Oh, my bank and Chase, blah, 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 blah. They'll say whatever they want to say. Okay, that's fine. And then I'll usually say that this is my pitch to get Lewis in on this. I'll say, hey, listen, if I can introduce you to someone I really trust, I've done loans with them personally myself, that can provide a really good rate and quality service, would you be open to that conversation? Most of the time they say yes, right? So when they say yes, the next thing that happens is a three-way text, right? right? Hey, John, I want you to meet Lewis. Super excited to get you guys connected. Lewis is a great loan officer that you can learn from and see if if you can do some business with, right? And allow them to communicate, and then from there, that relationship will start, right? So today, we're gonna go over a quick agenda, yep. and we're gonna talk about, and I'm gonna read this out. What is the impact of collaborating with a real estate agent and the mortgage lenders? And basically, what we're gonna talk about today is empowering the real estate agent to work seamless with the mortgage lender to ensure the best client experience from lead to close. Now. That's very corporate talk. But basically what we're talking about is how do we work together in synergy to make things smoother and be able to convert more leads, but at the same time, getting more referrals, which is basically what you said. I wanna, so, so what I want out of that, because it says, what's the impact? The impact I want in a nutshell, right, is I wanna close a deal, I want a happy buyer with a, with a beautiful home, and I want referrals. For both of us right that's but, what i want to but ask. there's a lot of steps in between and there's a lot of linguistics and there's science behind how we do things that a lot of times we don't talk about because me and you have been doing this for so long yeah. that we forget that there's steps that we okay. do every time so that's what we're going to talk about today we're going to understand the client's needs and their goals that's really important because when Juan reaches out to a client he's going to ask specific questions and these specific questions are very important because if he communicates that information with me, then I can reiterate that information to the client and they understand that we're working together as a team. I'm not having to recreate or recreate a wheel trying to find things out. Juan has already set it up from the very beginning by asking the right questions to the client and then I come around behind him. He already communicates that to me on a three-way text or email or a quick phone call so that when I talk to the client, I already know what the needs and wants of the client are, even before I start the conversation, which makes a huge impact. It takes me, sometimes it takes me several minutes to build that rapport with the client 
because I'm using family, occupation, recreation, and money to, to build that rapport with them. But if Juan has done his job and I already know what their wants and needs are, then I can pinpoint and focus on those needs and wants and the conversation was much faster. Yeah. Am I right? Oh, absolutely. So, so just to add on to that, sometimes I, when I give them the, like what they told me, hey, they said they wanted this kind of house, da, 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 da. it all sound very linear, like they wanted X, Y, and Z. And then I give that information to Lewis. Lewis, Lewis has that great conversation, wins rapport with them, works on making them feel very confident about buying a home, so they're not scared, they're actually enjoying the process versus like, you know, not wanting to do that stuff. A lot of times, this is super interesting, what we'll find is he'll call me back, he's like, Juan, remember you told me this? Actually, he'll get some other information that I didn't get. And I'm like, right. oh, I didn't know that that's super valuable. You saved yep. me a boatload of time and showing a bunch of properties that they never really wanted in the first place. So he ends up saving me time. This is our back and forth in right. a very positive way to confirm the information that they once gave me. I'm getting it now, I'm like, okay, that's great to know. And then we just move forward in a different direction. So it's really important that you have a lender who's updating you on the files. Now, another expectation we need to set with clients and with agents themselves is, if you give me a lead, we're gonna reach out to that lead, but typically what we do as a team is we'll send out first a text, introducing ourselves and finding out when's the best time to talk to them. Or if you've done your homework like Juan does, Juan will go, hey, I've talked to them, they're ready at two o'clock. So then I put it in my schedule to call them at two o'clock, right? Don't expect your lender to drop everything to call your lead right there and then because he might be working on another loan that's closing that's right. or talking to an underwriter or whatever. Always try to set up a time down the road to set up the expectation. Or if you don't set up the time, the lender is going to take his time. I mean, not take his time. He's going to make sure he texts and gets that appointment so he can go in and have the proper time with the client. Because yeah. that's really important. That's really important. So, for instance, I don't want to bombard my loan officer at randomly 11 a.m., randomly at 1.15, and then at 3.45, like you got stuff to do, right? Mm -hmm. He's got loans to close, he's got things, he's got paperwork to get from people, he's got closings to go to. That's not how I want to treat him. I want him to be, a, a, he's a business partner, we work together. So when you're on the phone with the actual buyer, it's, hey, so when would be a great time to have that conversation? When are you open? Tuesday, okay, great. Afternoon or morning, when are you more open? Or you can ask this way, when are you, when's your least busy time? Is it the morning or afternoon? Oh, I'm least busy in the afternoon. Great. When you say afternoon, like after five or after one? Right? Exactly. Like close it, it down. Get okay, it five o'clock, great. Like five to six, would that work best? Five to six, great. Now we get the information to Lewis, he now knows he needs to call him from five to six. Right? right. You can also, because we've already set up a three-way text, it can go on the three-way text. Hey, looking forward to visit with you at five o'clock. Well, I'll call you shortly after five. So now he doesn't have to follow up 18 times. Nope. I don't have to follow up 18 times. We're getting, we're moving through the process more seamlessly. This is and, on the legion side. Yeah, because I see a lot of times the agents get scared. They think, finally have a lead, they got a client, they're building a little rapport, and they're afraid to structure that time frame. But you gotta look at the other side. If you have a busy client, and you don't do that, you're gonna lose that client too. That's right. Because if you were if you were trying to get me as a client, as hard as I run, dude, you'd be in big trouble if you didn't try to nail me down. Let me ask you something. If you went right to the now? doctor and he said, show up tomorrow, your first question is, what time? <laughs> right? Exactly. We need to pin down a time. So we need to, we're professionals. We are middlemen professionals in real estate, right? We gotta pin, we gotta pin down a time. So pin them down a time between five to six, six to seven. And really, I don't care what time it is. One to two, three. You you tell me, you dictate the terms of time. I just need to know when you're available so you pick up the phone so we're not hustling Correct. more than we need to. We can hustle somewhere else. And when you talk to your clients, create that expectation with them because you're a professional. If you're a real estate agent and you're a lender, I'm gonna set expectations as well. I'm gonna tell my clients, you know, you can call between this time and this time, we'll return calls between this time. Uh, you can text us anytime. We always set up the expectations and establish. Right. You need to establish it from the very beginning. Because if not, you will have clients call you at 11 o'clock at night. You'll have a client call you at 7 a.m. in the morning. You'll have that. And if you didn't set the expectations from the very beginning of what you're going to do and how you're going to handle this process, they'll run over you. Yeah. And when they call you at 11, it's not their fault. It's your fault. Yeah. Right? Because you didn't set up the expectation. Had you set up the expectation, they wouldn't have done that. Or if you would have given them my app, which they could have played with to, to work on the payments and figure things out. There's that too. That's another thing. <laughs> I had, we had a client recently that every house, he would look at 10 different scenarios. And he would email us and you know we would get them all 
the scenarios you wanted. And finally one day the girls are like, oh my God, this would be like the 35th scenario we've done for this guy. And I said, well, what, what did you not send him our app? And she goes, oh, no. So she sent him the app, got him the, the, the purchase calculator. He already knew some of the numbers because of all the expectations. And all of a sudden, no more emails. Mm, look at that. Gone. Like we did until he found the right house and we came down to the, and then I had a, a Zoom call with him. We went through what he wanted to look at and we figured it out and locked him in. But if I wouldn't have got that to him, it would have continued. Yeah. Because everybody's a little different. Right. Everybody's, everybody's different. different. We exactly. all have different needs, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's I love it. Different. And then we also got to look at the hurdles. We kind of look at what's going on with the file. What are their hurdles? Is it, is it down payment? Is it money? Is it gift is you know whatever the case may be if we if we work together and communicate from the beginning we know and we know how to set up that file to move forward it makes a big difference to set up that client to have the right expectations and we do right you know what i love about this but it's where during the process so buyers uh, buyer and seller execute the contract we're under contract now we're going through the process it can take roughly 30 days to close right and so now the loan officer may need paperwork right mm -hmm. it i don't just go okay lois let me know when it's time to close and I'll see you in 25 days and good luck, right? That That's, doesn't work that, that way. That doesn't work that it way, right? That, that doesn't it's, work that way at all. It, I check in with Lewis. Lewis, are they turning in all the paperwork? Is there anything missing, right? And if he says, yeah, I can't get a hold of him and try three times, I'm going to be like, dude, well, let me reach out to him and see if I can get a hold of him to see if I can get him to turn in that paperwork and let him know how important that is for this deal. People live life and, you know, they all have jobs. Just like as a realtor, you have a job. They have a job. Yeah. So they have, and then they have family and they got kids in soccer and they got things going on. So sometimes that email is missed that we sent them or goes to junk. And it's pivotal that we try as a team, Rockstar team, when we see a client is not being reachable, then we start CCing our agents. But at the same time, you know, keep the three-way communication, three-way emails. We do different things to keep things going all the time throughout the process. Okay. And those are things that are really, really, really important through the processes that everybody communicates. You don't stop by taking the loan application or by going under contract. That's when the job starts. And so think about it. At the very beginning, the three-way text was set up. It opened up the line of communication. Trust was built. We've established trust, rapport. We're building all these things. And then all of a sudden, Lewis says, hey, I tried three times. I sent him an email. I sent him this. And I, hadn't... I could go, hey, so-and-so. Hey, John, just wanted to make sure. Lewis mentioned he was looking for that, the seventh page of the, bank, of the bank statements. Can you, by when can you send that question mark, right? And so now maybe he'll respond. Maybe that was the one minute and now it's not Lewis, it's coming from me. Maybe that hits him in a certain way. Maybe it hits, maybe it's not me. Maybe now it needs to be Lewis's turn, right? And that's the partnership. It's that give and take. It's that bouncing back and forth. And, and between the two forward. of us, we make things happen. Correct, makes a huge difference. So let's go to the next slide real quick. Yeah. So initial questions, lenders will ask the client, you know, we're going to ask them a lot of clients, and I'm not going to go through this really quick. Who will apply? Timeline, self employed or W 2, what is the client's income, estimated credit score, first time home buyer, what, you know, what, what does the savings look like? The reason why we want you guys to know these questions that we're going to ask is because as we get these answers, I'm going to, you're going to know some of these. Some of these you're probably not going to know because the client doesn't want you to know what their credit score or, or stuff like that, but you're going to have a general idea of where they're at all the time. So that makes a big, big difference. But you gotta understand what these questions are because as an agent, you're asking these questions as well, aren't you? That's right, that's right. Maybe not in as much detail as you, the loan officer, for sure. I don't, they're, mm. they're, I've listened to you and I'm like, ooh, I don't ask that one. But there's no way for me to ask that. I don't know that much. And you right? don't need to know. And that. I don't need to know, right? You need to know, not me. Correct. Like, so, yeah, so absolutely. So, so something I wanna touch on. This is important, I, we talked about this before was, if waving a magic wand, one, one other thing I want from my loan officer, which you do so well. So, and I've had bad experiences with other loan officers where, for instance, the loan officer could not particularly do that loan because they were a W-2, W-9, they whatever changed the industries, foreign national, whatever the case was, they couldn't quite do the loan. And then all of a sudden they disappear on me. Well, that's great that they disappear on me, but what about the buyer that wants to buy? What about me, the agent that wants to help the buyer get in the home? Now I got to get them to go start over with someone else. Well, that was kind of grueling. Nobody likes turning in all their bank statements, credit reports, and all that. That's not the sexy part of real estate. Mm -hmm. Not at all. So it causes friction when I have to uproot him and find somewhere else to go. One of the things this is this is super big for me was the, that Lewis did so well was 
Whenever Lewis could do a loan, it was slightly outside of a portfolio loan, slightly outside of conventional or FHA. He was always willing to forward their paperwork and information with permission of the buyer to a loan, another loan officer, maybe at another bank or something that could do the work for them so that he created a streamline so that the buyer didn't feel all you know discombobulated. Well, I mean, you understand, as a, you, when you partner up with a lender, you're, you're a team. And, and for Juan to continue to send me business over a long period of time is because I know what other programs are going on out there. If I don't have the program, I may know someone who has the program. Right. And I'd rather send that deal to somebody I know that's another lender that's gonna take care of Juan, right? Because Juan will come back to me again. I won't lose them. But if I shut down and say, oh no, there's nothing I can do, or I don't help, or I don't initiate, why would one come back to me ever again to continue to do business again? That's so funny. Team. That's so funny you say that. And yet I had loan officers do that all the time. And guess what? I didn't go back to them. Exactly. Right? Because you know, yeah, exactly. Because I think long term. And you know, your agent is the person that's as a lender is going to continue to send you business, right? Yeah. That client, I may get two or three deals in a life. Right? Yeah. And I sometimes I get lucky, I get five or six deals. I can end up doing second, third generation the whole bit. But the reality is your agent is the person that continues to send you business over and over again. And an agent has a great lender that helps with follow up and doing things is going to always be a better relationship than just randomly going to different banks that you don't know who they are. I mean, it's just something totally different. So you got to take care of each other. Plus so us being part, sure. us being part of EXP and other things like that. We have teams, we have people we help. We want to continue to help everybody regardless, you know, you put out good karma, good karma comes back. That's what I will do. 100%, Makes I love it. Difference, you know, yep. so that's just what it is. So let's go to the next slide. Boom. We're gonna talk really quick, basic documents. This is just an overall so that you know what is needed. Because what happens is, is this. We get them pre-approved and then they forget to send us two months bank statements, right? And, or they just send us a screenshot of the balances in the bank account. Well, there's rules and regulations against that. So we, we can take that on a pre, pre qual pre-qualification that, okay, they sent us a screenshot, we'll get a pre-qual, but what is better, a pre-qualification or a pre-approval? What would you rather have? Pre-approval. Okay, and how can I issue a pre-approval if I don't have the required documents? It doesn't work, I can't, it's just a pre-qual. So, what's, what's the difference between a pre-qual and pre-approval for okay. people who don't so, know? Okay, so a pre-qual is basically, you your client fills out an application, nothing is verified. We don't verify the bank account, the pay stubs, the W-2s, we go exactly off what the client put in the application. Mm. So, and we issue a pre-qual. Basically, the pre-qual is basically saying that we have to verify everything. Mm. So how, I mean, that's like standing yeah. on, that's like building a house on sand, yeah. right? That's a pre-qual. A pre-approval is we built the house on a rock. We verified, we got W-2s, we got pay subs, we got the bank stamps, we know where the down payment's coming from. We have all that information, so that's more of a, that's a more solid buyer than someone who just filed an application like at Chase or Wells Fargo. They send out pre-calls all the time. Right. And a lot of times they don't verify anything until yeah. the contract's in. Right. I'm closing one next week, exact situation. Went under contract, then she found out that they don't qualify. Thank God she came to me, I did her original loan. She came back to me, we looked at everything and said, okay, yeah, we can figure out a way to get your loan back. The other lender couldn't figure it out. Right. She was doing right. it because she, that's why I bank with, and they were giving me a special. Right, yeah, I, I know that's how it starts. And, they, <laughs> and the buyers don't know, right? They yeah. just don't know what they don't know. It's, is it their fault? Not really. I mean, they don't know what they don't know. How are they supposed to know, right? Yeah. It's so, just like, it's like the two years of deployment history with start and end dates. Now, most lenders out there don't know that you just got out of college and you got a new job, you started 30 days ago. Can he buy a house? I don't think so. Yes, he can. Oh, he can. See, yeah. I didn't know that. You know why? Oh because the, the college transcript becomes the two year work history. Ah. Most people don't know that. I didn't know that. See? Just learned something so, new. Or they went to a trade school. If you went to a trade school for six months, right, and then you started a new job in that trade, that trade school becomes part of your two year work history. So you don't put in there, I was in trade school, you put, it, you put the trade school, and that's part of your employment. Most people don't know that. Wow. And then a lot of people think checking savings down payment, there's a lot of little things like you can get a gift, you can get down payment assistance. There's so many different programs to help that. But if you don't get with a lender up front and figure out how to do this from the beginning, then all of a sudden they're like, oh, I got this money under the table and it's yeah. three days before closing and the deal blows up. Yeah. Because it wasn't set up right.
So there's just a lot of news. That's why you do things at the beginning. Well, I'll tell you something just from the listing agent perspective. When I am a listing agent, if you give me a pre, I've been at it long enough to know if you give me a, if you say your buyer's pre-qualified versus pre-approved, pre I'm going. Wait a minute. Why are they not pre-approved? Because pre-qualification, just like you said, we're just taking their word that what they're saying is what it is. Versus pre-approval is documentation, right? right? You've actually reviewed the documentation. Totally I don't want to take their word for it on a five hundred thousand dollar house when my seller has to relocate and be out in. In, in, and you see that happen. Minutes. That's happened to you, hasn't it? Oh, it happens. It happens a lot. It's pretty common, right? Yeah. So it's like you get a double check, triple check, and to, to be able to have a pre-approval versus a pre-qual is a big deal, right? Mm -hmm. It's the difference between having things blow up in your face versus executing and having a smooth transition. Yeah. Right. So let's go to the next step. Next step is we got to find the client a great property. Okay. You're going to find them a property, but that also makes it different. We need to check what the property taxes are because sometimes property taxes can kill a deal. Depending on where you buy, I mean, Fort Worth's rate is a lot higher than Collin County. Okay, the house could have been owned by an investor. They don't have a homestead. The taxes could be two to three thousand dollars higher than a house that actually has somebody in there. Yep. So those are things you really need to look at. Age of a home. I don't care if the house is new or old. I think all homes are great. I'd rather have an older home than a newer home. You got a lot more room per square foot. But age, you got to look at because of insurance. If you got to find out how old the roof is. On a house because the insurance can make a huge difference. I've seen insurance quotes almost double in the last past two years. I'm talking houses before that would cost eighteen hundred dollars insurance now are four thousand because the roof wasn't wow. in place. Oh wow. Okay. So when you divide that monthly, 125, 130 bucks in insurance versus two hundred some dollars a month, all of a sudden the ratios don't work and you have a client that's dead. So those are things that are very, very, very important. Condition, maintenance. You know, there's just a lot of things you need to know before you go show a house. And more important is make sure that you are with a lender that's going to take the time that when you are going to show a house or they say, this is the house we like, and you send over the information to me and Jackie, that we, you know, you, you work with a lender that's going to take the time to look up the taxes, going to run some insurance yeah. for you ahead of time yeah. during that option period or sooner because that way you're not losing your client's money. How do you lose a client that faster than anything? losing their money, right? Yeah. They're not gonna come back yeah. and use it again. So these are things that are very important when you're looking for a property for your client and make sure they're on the right program too because if they're FHA and they're looking at a home that needs everything redone, may not be the right property for them, right? So those are things you need to really consider when you're out with your clients because sometimes clients fall in love with projects. Yes, yes they okay? do. <laughs> they really do. Yeah. So those are just things that you need to consider when you're looking at properties and of course, in real estate, location, location, location. Location makes a big difference. Find them the right place. Let's go to the next slide. So, winning offers with solid, that's what we were talking about a little while ago. But, you know, we're gonna talk right now is how does a good lender win deals for you? Okay, so let me start and then I'll let you do sure. what, what that would look like. So, imagine you're the agent, you've got a great loan officer, you've got a good buyer, but they've worked together, gotten a pre-approval letter, we put in an offer, we're about to execute, but the listing agent is wanting to verify that they actually have a real good buyer on their hands before they decide between three buyers, which one, and we hope that we're, we're their top choice, but we don't know for sure. And this is where the loan officer plays a role. This is where he steps in and becomes important in this moment in time, and it can be definitive. So yes. what does that look like? I'm the agent, I put in an offer, they're thinking about us, we're in the top two, and then all of a sudden, I've got Lewis calling on behalf of the buyer. Well, first of all, you gotta set it up from the beginning. I always teach our agents that if they're gonna send in an offer, CC us. Let the listing agent know that I'm CCing the lender with our offer, so if you have any questions, they're available to you. And have my contact information in there, okay? Because what's gonna happen is if you CC my team, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna send out uh, uh, thing basically saying how well qualified the buyer is. We're also going to talk about our reviews and we're going to send them our processes to the listing agent. So they're going to have an email that they're going to be able to look us up as a lender, number one. But number two, we're also going to, in that email, we're telling them, hey, what is the best time for us to reach out to you to tell you how good our buyer is, right? So we're being proactive, not reactive. So the best thing about that is when the listing agent calls me, if you haven't, this is the other scenario, they don't CC me. What do you think happens when a listing agent calls me and I haven't been CC'd on an offer? Well, you're blindsided. Exactly. So the listing agent goes, hey, I have Hannah Montana <laughs> buying this house at one, two, three. I just want to know how qualified they are. 
I'm like, okay, let me look up Hannah Montana. So I get on my computer and I go, okay, so how much are they buying it for? I, I yeah. don't know. Oh, they put an offer at 430. I'll get their approval for 425, right? Okay, yeah, so yeah, they're very well qualified. Can can you give me just a few minutes? I, I want to check on something. So now I got to stop. Yeah. <clears throat> I gotta, now I got to pick up the taxes on the house. Mm -hmm. I got to guesstimate what the insurance could be. Hopefully there's nothing high because now they're on, they're like, teeter toggle right like they're on the bump then i may even have to call the client and say hey you know you went five grand over what you're approved for where's the other money coming from right there's a lot of things that now i'm in trouble yeah <clears throat> versus <clears throat> other way around is you cc me on the offer we immediately pull the taxes on the house we look up where they're at on the property and we can stop things before it gets too far that's right. Right? It makes you look much better, right? Oh, yeah. And the other way around. So then I reach out to the listing agent. I tell them how, well, I, my first thing as a as a lender is I sell them on Juan and Bettina Suzuki. What That's does that sound like? Thing. What does your call sound so, like? Let's say, so I'm not, I, let's say I call you or I, or you you call me. I'll go, I'm the listing agent. You're the listing So I go, hey, Juan, this is Lewis Reyes with Citibank Mortgage. Rockstar team, okay. just wanted to let you know that I know that Juan and Bettina put in an offer at 123 Main Street for Ralph and Trish. Ralph, okay. okay. Okay, yeah, 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 I had that offer in my in my inbox, yep. Yeah, and I've been working with Juan and Bettina for the last, since 2007. We've done a lot of transactions. What I love about Juan and Bettina is they, they got their act together. As a lender, my biggest problem with, with realtors is when they don't know what they're doing. And as listing agents, you have the same issue, right? Like when you have a, a, a buyer's agent just doesn't know what they're doing, it right. becomes a problem, right? right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, with Juan and Bettina, I've done business with them for a long time. They're solid, they do things right, and you don't have to worry about it. They're just solid people, okay? And, I said, and, the, and about the buyers, we've already got them pre-approved. We, we've gone through the process, we have assets, we've, we've done the credit assets, we've already written DU, automatic underwrite. Listing agent's gonna understand that terminology of course. because they're a listing agent. Most listing agents have been in business a long time. And I tell them how well qualified the borrower is. Yeah. And I say, and by the way, we sent you an email with our information and our reviews. And as my team, what we do is weekly, we're gonna update you through the process. So you know when we ordered title, you know when the appraisal came in. We're probably gonna call you and double check the appraiser got there. There's gonna be certain things that we're gonna update you through the process so that we don't have any surprises at the end. Mm. Okay. How, how do you feel when you hear that? When I hear that, I feel like, ooh, I'm not gonna get blindsided or there's a less probability of being blindsided. He's done his job. He's working with a realtor he likes and knows for many, many years. This sounds like, a, and if I had a good feeling from the, now, if I had a good feeling from the agent he's talking about and this verified that feeling I got from them, this is like, okay, now I'm like, okay, I'm feeling really good about this deal. This could be the buyer that we should recommend our seller to go on a contract with. So a lot of times what happens is because I've talked to the agent and I've created that rapport with them, if we win that contract, I'm gonna build that rapport throughout the process and keep things smooth. But what's really cool about it, if there's any hurdles, because we have communication and it's not a last minute day before, they don't have their guard up. That's right. Okay. No balls are up, yeah. right? Move this. Yeah. So if there is a if there is an appraisal issue, because we built that report, they're more at ease to work with us. Yes. Okay? Trust has been built. Exactly. Hey, yes. the appraisal came in five thousand dollars light. Yeah. Here's the comps. Do you have anything to support it? I'm communicating with them two weeks before closing. Right. Huge difference. We don't have loans fall apart for that reason because that communication is done between the seller's agent, buyer's agent, everybody's right. together throughout the process. Right. Another unique thing, and my wife can testify to this, but she's also an agent, is a lot of times because we did this, if that first deal falls through, guess who the backup offer is? Us. Us. Even right. though that first offer was higher and better, if it falls apart during the option period, the first thing that listing agent does is they reach out to me, the lender, and you because they noticed that we were proactive. Yeah. So I, I wish I could put my wife on camera right now to say, but how many times have we done that in one houses? Oh, oh gosh. Uh, Five, six, seven. Yeah, yeah. Many, many times, times that we have been, we didn't win the first time, but then we ended up being the backup and ending it getting the house. Yeah. Jill, my assistant, was one of those situations. Yeah. We communicated That's with right. the listing agent right. and and she didn't get it. She didn't bid high enough on her house. But because we stayed in communication and we did that with the listing agent, when that first deal fell apart, guess who the first person they called? Yeah. Us. 
yeah. and we end up getting the deal. So that's how important it is to communicate, have your lender communicate with the listing agent because it's going to make a difference. There's been times that we were like the third highest bid, not top bid, but yeah. because that communication was done, all of a sudden the listing agent went back to the buyer, to the seller and said, look, these are our three offers. This one's this, this one's this, this one's a little bit lower, but I know this lender, he's gonna get us to the finish line and they'll counter on, a, on that deal and they won't look at the other ones. That's right. Because sometimes price isn't everything. And I've, lately I've been having a lot of clients, a lot of listing agents call me and ask me is, are they investors or are they gonna live in the house? Which is kind of weird. Right. Because a lot of sellers don't want to ruin their neighborhood when they're leaving. Mm. Isn't they're that thoughtful. weird? Yeah, they're thoughtful. About I've it. never seen that before. Well, they before it was always the money. They feel committed to their But neighbors. now, yeah, exactly. Now they're committed to their neighbors and they're yeah. like, hey, are these people really going to live in the house? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I see this huge down payment. So that's really weird. So let's go to the next slide. Communication is key for success. If you're not communicating, throughout the process, if you're not with a lender who's actually making the updates, sending the emails to the buyer's agent, the listing agent, and the buyers throughout the process, you're not with the right lender. You need to find another lender. Agreed, agreed. If your lender is not doing all these things in this level of communication, it's not the right lender. That's my opinion. You don't have a partner, mm -hmm. right? And so I wanna share with you guys something. This is, this is really important. You know, on the MLS, about one in every four houses falls out of contract. Right, one in every four, that's 25%. Let's just go over some, some numbers real quick. If the average agent does eight transactions a year and one in four fall out of contract, that means out of the eight they were supposed to have, they ended up with six. I'm not exactly sure what the numbers was, about 30%? Roughly about 30% of your business went out the door because you're not partnering up with the right person. You're not partnering up in such a way that you're working to generate referrals. When they see a smooth transition like this, it's the case where we get referrals all the time, right? And referrals are free, highest probability of closing. It's just a wonderful deal. So if you're wondering like, why go through all this? Like, why not just, you know, hand it off to Lewis and just watch Lewis figure it out or watch the loan officers figure it out. Why, why, don't, why do we partner up? It's because we want to grow this. We want deals to close. We want smooth processes mm -hmm. that are gonna breed referrals and long term. It's a lot easier to ask for referrals during the process if you're doing a good job, yes. then ask for referrals at the end. Yes, and especially if they've had a crappy experience, mm -hmm. they felt like they were gonna lose the house and then get the house and then lose it and get it and lose it and get it and lose it and get it, how you can ask for a referral? You can't. No. Right. You have no rapport. No. You also have to have a lender who's gonna be honest with you. If you do have a tough file, because I've had some tough files and I've told people right up front, like I had one last month, I told the client, I told the agent right up front, look, if we're gonna have to wait one or two weeks to move this process forward, we're gonna have some issues because he really, really wanted to wait several weeks because he was waiting on something to come in. Right. And, and I warned everybody up front. I said, look, this is gonna be a tough file. Yes. I even told the listing agent, I'll be honest with you, I know you took this contract, and this is, but they're telling me they're gonna wait on this. This is gonna put us behind. Right. I set up the expectations from the very beginning, and at the end it became that, he, you know, back and forth. But at the same time, the other issue I had was that the agent was agreeing with the buyer when we were asking for things. Mm. <laughs> what should be the posture from the from the agent perspective? Like, should I, the agent, take the buyer side and be like, yeah, I don't know why that loan officer is asking for that. Should I be on the loan officer's side? Like, hey, buyer, listen, you better do what he says because he's the one getting you the loan. Like, what should be the well, you angle? Gotta, you, gotta be the be, you gotta just be an intermediator. Okay. So it's like, oh, wow, I understand that, that you've already given the bank statements, but let, let me do this. Let me just, let's get a minute. Let me see if I can get a hold of his team and find out what the story is. Got it. Right? And then communicate with your lender or do a three-way call or three-way text to get everybody on a quick phone call because it could be a matter of just pages missing on the bank statement. Got it. Like in this scenario, we were missing pages. It was a one to four bank statement. Yeah. The underwriter got one to three. She didn't get the fourth page. Well, the fourth page was advertising. But because of the rules of the Patriot Act, and we need to source everything in the last 60 days, in that rule, it states that we need to have all four pages of the bank statement. Even the advertising. Even the advertising. Which is part nothing of it. to do Which with the loan. <laughs> nothing to do with anything, but it's part, of, it doesn't complete the document. Got it. Right? So the buyer was right. We did have all the bank statement that was important to him, but the underwriter needed that fourth page because mm -hmm. it completed 
her documentation, so she didn't get written up. Right. So those are things that you, instead of taking the buyer side or the lender side, just be the intermediator. Just be that, oh, let's just figure this out. Because the buyer may just be upset about, oh my God, I've already sent that, right? Right. Like, they're time wasting me, right? Right. Versus you can come in and just be the soft lender. Right. 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 And, and in this situation, I, I just had it. It's like the agent kept going, why are you needing this? Like, mm -hmm. what? Like, and I had to re educate him over and over and over. Right. It worked out, but. Right. And the buyers are super happy they're in their home now, but it would have been a lot smoother if he would have gave me all that stuff two weeks earlier. Right. Yeah. <laughs> You know, there are Time so is in the essence. We have a contract with a date. We have 21 days to get credit approval, right? Yeah. We have a five day option period or a six day option period. We have so many deadlines on that contract that if you're not teamed up with a great lender, you're losing money for your clients. How many how many people touch a loan by the time it's done and the seller signing off, the buyer signing off on oh it? God. Roughly. I mean, What's oh the God, it's the number? Probably. Well, the problem is, it's not only the lenders touching yeah. it, it's the title company yeah. touching because the inspector, the appraiser, yeah. could be up to 30 people when it's all set 30 up. people, 30 people touching a loan, and we're the middleman trying to make everything happen, Correct. and we're partnering up with the loan officer. That's the other middleman. So there's two middlemen trying to make everything happen. Collaboration, partnership, this needs yeah. to happen. Otherwise, loans fall apart. They fall apart quicker than you think they do. Yeah. It doesn't take much for a loan to fall apart. Don't let your clients buy anything until you close for the next slide. It's very, very important because what happens is, is that when you're going through the home buying process at the very end, usually a couple days before closing, we do what they call an LQI. An LQI is a report that tells you what the balances are on all your credit cards, if you had any new inquiries, and if you had any lates. It doesn't pull your credit, but what happens when the underwriter looks at it and all of a sudden there's a 60 day late? So I can't, I can't tell my buyer to go buy a Ferrari a few days. No! Wait till you get the keys! <laughs> Wait till you get the keys before you go buy a Ferrari. Buy. Don't go to rooms and go and get an inquiry. Because, or put a furniture on hold. Because guess what? They put it on hold, but they also issued a $3,000 credit limit, and they have that hold of $1,500 on there. All of a sudden, now you have a payment. Guess what? If you were at a tight ratio, you just, it may go through, but now your rate may go up. Got it. <laughs> And now I'm oh, now, you may not qualify. And now your buyer is sitting there. Let's say they close with a higher rate. Are they happy? No. Can I ask for a referral? No. 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 <laughs> so educate them. You know, navigate them to the mortgage way. Set set clear expectations of what to do. Okay. And, and that way we understand what's going on with potential roadblocks, the appraisal inspection. You need to let them know what the timelines are because we have those those timelines on the contract. And you know, if you have a, a veteran that's buying a house. There's up to 10 days before you get an appraisal. Right. Okay. Right. Set those expectations up with your client from the very beginning so they're not surprised at the end. Very simple stuff. But a lot of agents are so scared of losing the deal, losing the client. And in reality, if they tell the truth of the client and set the expectations, the client's going to be happy with you because you're going to look more what? Professional. Professional. That's right. Makes a big difference. You know, and there's a lot of times, just so you know, you don't have to be the complete master. There's a lot of times I'm in the middle of a buyer consultation. Tell me if this isn't true. I will call Lewis in the middle of my consultation when they ask me three questions and I don't know the answers to them. Like, I don't know, good question. I don't know, good question. I don't know, you know what, let me call Lewis. Bing. Okay. <laughs> Lewis, do you have two minutes? Can I put you on speakerphone real quick? Yeah, they have questions, I don't know the answers to these. Can you help me out? Yeah, okay, here we go. Can you, so here's the question they had and, they'll, and Lewis will be like, yeah, so okay, sounds like da 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 And he goes through the process. He is a partner that I trust, right? And so we're here to get deals done. We're here to make things happen. So I hope that paints a picture for like the relationship, the real relationship between a thriving agent and a loan officer that are really trying to make business go back and forth. And everybody's really working for the same goal, which is to produce more deals. Yeah. And have happy people. So really important, mortgage loan process, clients given everything to you, they got everything in there, but then it goes into underwriting and then all of a sudden the underwriter finds something that she wants an explanation on. She wants something, okay, additional information. Prepare your clients from the very beginning that there may be something additional. Even though we got all the bank statements, we got the pay stubs, we got we have everything established. There may be something the underwriter wants explained before we go to closing. Okay, and another very important, you have to have a good lending team that's actually going over the closing disclosure ahead of time and and going it over with the agent at the same time to make sure that if there was a thousand dollar extra done instead of you know repairing something or if there was this, then it's on the CD. And make sure you explain to your clients that it's very important to sign that CD because that will delay your closing. 
By the time that CD is signed, we gotta wait three days. Okay, so very, very, very important to communicate with your agent, with your clients that information. And a lot of realtors are scared. Mm. Like I call them, hey, the CD's out. Can you call your client? I've already called them. Can you reach out to them? And I'm like, this is the most important document they need to sign. Okay, you need to look at it. Make sure your commission's on there. Right, that's right. <laughs> You know, That's did right. you see the go to the title company? I might, I don't care if you get paid or not. <laughs> with you, I might. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's a very important yeah. thing. So just make sure that you, you explain to your client that there's going to be steps. I try to tell them from the very beginning, but let them know. Set the expectations. Do it in your buyer consultation. It makes it a lot easier. Yeah. Let's go to the next slide. I love it. It makes it easy. So closing successfully, coordinating. These are things you think are really Dumb, but these are things that really need to be established from the very beginning because a lot of times you need to let the client know like hey when we get the CD out you sign it we set up your closing you're gonna close on this date make sure you take time off from work I mean I don't know how many clients they sign their CD they go over the numbers I tell them how what they need to bring I let the agent know what's going on and the clients work you know I'm working that day you're buying the biggest thing you've ever bought and you're gonna work that day yeah. Half a million dollar house. And I, I'm working, working or, today. Or I'm out of town. Oh, I'm out of town at work that day. Well, did you not go over the contract with the client right. the day you set the closing date? Like, it's a surprise a week before closing that you're not going to be there for your closing. I mean, we can get around it, but we got to have coordination to do it. Right. May have to send a, a mobile notary to Seattle, wherever he's at, to close them. But these are things that if you are communicating through the process as, as, a, as a lender and as a realtor, it wouldn't be a surprise to the client. That's right. It makes things a little bit easier. Communication and all this, so we're streamlining. We're right. not putting out fires, we're streamlining in advance. Communication is up front, it's not on the back end. Mm -hmm. We don't want, if we're putting out fires, we're doing it wrong, right? That's, exactly. that's a golden rule we have. If we're putting out fires, we're doing it wrong. We should have done it three weeks in advance. Yeah, the other thing is when you when you get that first initial CD to the client, a lot of times it's not balanced yet because it hasn't gone, it may not have gone to the title company yet to get all the final numbers. What so, do you mean by balanced? Well, what happens is a lot of times we gotta get a CD out to make that closing date, right? But the title company may not have time to balance it, meaning double checking the HOA docs, double checking mm -hmm. different things that need to be taken care of according to the contract. We do the best we can to the point. So it makes a big difference when you're looking at the numbers, to, uh, they may be an unbalanced CD, and that's something you need to understand as an agent, that this may not be the final numbers. So that when you talk to your clients, say, hey, I got the CD from under, looks like I'm only gonna bring $7,100, but on there, the HOA fees may be missing. You know I mean? And we'll tell them too, but you need to be aware of it as well. So right. that they're not surprised when it's eight thousand to close, right. even though we prepared them for nine. Right. I always prepare them for the worst case scenario. Got but it. those are things you need. We need to work as a team to communicate, so that because if we're on the same page with it, it makes us look good, right? That's right. But if you say, "What do you mean you got to bring?" or you right. get defensive as an agent, right? That makes us look bad. It also makes you look bad because you got eggies right. on your face. And there's so many moving pieces of the puzzle. So mm -hmm. so so valuable. Yeah, um, those are just things you need to do. And then we'll go to this. Next slide is basically questions, you know, and a lot of people, when it comes to the communication between me and you, it's really important that we're on the same page and it's really important to communicate any little bits that you know versus what I know. Yeah. So, and, and the reason why is it makes, it makes an importance to you, right? That's right. You know something that I have. That's right. And vice versa. Yeah. I've got one question I've added to my toolbox, which is a very important question. And I'm just going to share this with you guys. And it's when I'm talking to Lewis or when I'm talking to anyone and I will ask them exactly, use the word exactly, exactly what do you mean by da da da? Because what I think I understood and what he's saying may be different. So I need, I always ask, this is a great question we add to your toolbox. Exactly what do you mean by when you say da da da? And I want him to elaborate to make sure I understand what's going on. And I, I do my very best to, to do the same thing, to, to be specific around the details. Yep. Yeah. So to recap really quick, when you're working with a lender as a realtor, make sure that that lender is another extension of you. Okay. If that lender is not another extension of you to help you grow your business, then you shouldn't be working with that lender. That's right. Or like they're not going to make a call or they're not, they're refusing to do something. That's not gonna, That's not a partnership. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the bigger banks out there are not going to do that. I mean, they're basically, if they're 
going with a credit union or if they're going with a bank, their whole goal is just to get the deal done. They're not going to communicate with anybody what's going on. If you truly have a lender who's a partner, you're going to know what's going on through the process all the way to the end. And that's where you're going to become successful and you're going to get a lot more referrals because you can ask for referrals during the process than the way to the end. Yeah, and the way to ask for a referral, just so you know, an easy way to ask for a referral is just like this. You know, you provided a value, you're creating this smooth kind of safety in the process. They feel safe, they feel secure, they feel excited about the new home, right? There's a moment in time and they say, hey, thank you, by the way, for all the work you're doing. Hey, thank you for whatever. An easy way to ask for a referral is, hey, let me ask you something. You know, I'm so happy that you're excited about getting this home and the work we're doing. My question to you is, you know, who do you know that I could help buy or sell a home in the next three to six months? Maybe at your church or maybe at your work or maybe at your daughter's ballet thing. You know, do you know anyone that you think I may be able to help in the next three to six months? And I just give in specifics and I kind of reach into her background of what she may have to be able to pull from. So she can think about her church. She can think about her work, and her if, daughter's ballet. And if you have a great lender, he's going to ask the same question when he does his updates and say, hey, now that we've been helping you through this process, because what happens typically with people is that when they're buying a home and they're at the water cooler at work and they're, they're drinking their coffee, whatever the case may be, they're talking about, hey, you know, I found a house. I got this great agent. I've been having, you know, they're talking about the, the experience, right? And people around them are listening. That's right. Okay, and that person, hey, so do you like your agent? Oh, yeah, he's a great guy, right? Do you like your lender? Oh, yeah, he's a great guy. And if you don't ask the question of, hey, now that we're going through this process, do you know anybody else that may be looking to buy a house in the next three to six months that we can help? Or the best present for me, if you want to thank us, is a referral. If you don't, and or also then you, hey, remember, don't keep us a secret. If you know anybody, that's another one. Right. Please share my name and information or give me their number. I'll call them because if you do that 90% about them and a few seconds about you on every conversation you're doing, updating them throughout the process, you will get referrals during the process because when do people are more excited about the buying process? At the beat, right then and there. In the middle of the process. Yeah, so if you don't ask That's for right. the referral during the process. That's right. At the end they go, oh yeah, there's like four or five friends who work. Oh, what yeah. is that? You know? But if you're reminding them, they'll keep right. you a secret. Yeah. through the process, little things like that, all of a sudden you're getting an email or text, hey, I was talking to Susan at work and she wants me to give them, is it okay if yeah. I give them your number? You know what's clear to me as you were as you were just talking, I was thinking about uh, thinking about like my mindset, your mindset, how we're kind of like almost on the same page, which is super important in partnership, mm -hmm. is that him and I know one thing. He's working to do such a good job in a smooth, seamless transaction that he hopes to get referrals. I'm hoping to do such a seamless job that I hope to get referrals. Well, if he's hoping to get referrals and I'm hoping to get referrals and we're both creating a seamless transaction where they're excited about the process, got a great home, things like that. Guess what the end result is? Referrals. referrals. Right. And so, and so, so now- So you never had a business. So you never had a business. It just keeps on compounding and compounding and compounding. The mindset is that we're working so smooth, so seamless that we're creating this environment of like just an exciting situation where they have a great home and they want to refer us. Right? Yep. And we want raving fans. Yeah, and that's the main thing about real estate. You got into real estate for one thing, to sell homes, right? But how do you sell homes? You gotta get referrals. You gotta get referrals. You can advertise, you can do all kinds of things, but if you don't have a good partnership with someone who's edifying you, because what me and Juan do very well is third party validation. And that's a science we, we should have got a little bit more into in, in this. We'll make another but video. We'll have to do another video. Is we third party validate each other constantly through the process so that that buyer feels comfortable with what's going on. There it is. Because you can, you know, I can send myself to the nth degree, but I'm still just blah. I mean, yeah. I'm just fluff because well, you, there's nothing back You know you. that if you go fluffing your own feathers around who you are, I'm this and I'm that and I'm this and I'm that, it just sounds like you're just you know, toot your own horn. Right. But when someone else toots your own horn, that has more, much more credibility. Much more power, much right? more so credibility. He toots my horn, I toot his horn, and back and forth we go throughout the whole process. Yep. And, and then we deliver. And then what happens at, um, we have a client that's closing right now. It's his son. We took her, we took her mom and dad. Mm -hmm. And now what did mom and dad do when he was ready to buy his first property? Yep. Came to us. That's right. Why? Because the way we took care of it, we took care of the parents, but because we tutored each other's horns through the process. And what did they come back to us? And we're talking about five years ago when right. we did a deal with And them. the dad's done about four deals with us. Exactly. The son's done another one. Then they bought their own. There's about six, seven deals in the last nine years with them. 
just off that family. Correct. So and that's normal. Yeah, and I did a refi off of them. And you did a refi, yeah. So, so that's normal. That's not like bragging, like, oh my, that's normal. That's so everyday. Don't operation. ever look as the one deal is the one deal. Because if you do, you're gonna miss out on a lot mm. more situations that are coming from there. Yeah. I always take care of the client like their family because I know that they're gonna have family members that'll come down the road and use this. Like this. Yeah, we're in a tight market right now. We're still doing business because we've taken care of our clients in the past. That's right. And there's a lot of people out there doing nothing. So at the conclusion uh, of this, let's go. Find the lender that that actually works with you and not against you. By the way, how can they get a hold of you? Just call the Rockstar team, 972-890-0048. Or you can find us on Facebook. You can find us on Instagram. And I'm Juan. If you guys ever want to learn about how to produce more as a partnership with a lender, like just want to get a little bit more nuance, some just deeper layers around it, my cell phone number is, this is my personal cell phone number, is 469-231-1057. We're here to help. Yep. And we're always looking for new team members to partner up with. So if you're not in the right situation with the team or whoever you're working with as an agent or as a lender, call us. We're always looking for new people to mentor, to train, to bring on our team, to help you grow your real estate business. I love it. That's more important than anything else. Thank you, you guys. Y'all have a blessed day.